Whakataka te hau ki te uru, whakataka te hau ki te tonga. Kia mā kina kina ki uta, kia mā taratara ki tai. E hi aki ana te ātākura, he tio, he huka, he hauhunga, ti hei mauri ora. Aotearoa New Zealand, we have a problem. Despite the fact that we live on a collection of beautiful islands located in the South Pacific, in the very heart of Polynesia, for generations we have bought into the idea that we are Little Britain. That we are, potentially, Trump food, Little America. And in the process of building our nation, in the image of these places located in the Northern Hemisphere, we have all but wiped out our indigenous heritage. In 2013, Census New Zealand discovered that just 3.7% of New Zealanders can call it or Māori. And if you're sitting there thinking, it's okay, the Māoris have got it, I'm really sorry to inform you that just one in five Māori people today can call it or Māori. And if you think about the, the environment that we operate in, you'll realise that we've grown an appetite for just a sprinkle, just a smidge of Del Māori in our daily lives, which is awesome. But you know, the truth is, if those news presenters at six o'clock move beyond Kilda and welcome to the news, guess what happens? the station is flooded with complaints. And although we love the all-black haka with a passion, and it riles us up and it gets us excited, you know, we still can't convince mainstream television to broadcast Te Matatini in its full glory. So what do you do when you're faced with this kind of a situation? Well, you dream a big dream, of course, a humongous dream the most amazing dream that you can think of. And that dream, for me, is about a million conversations in Te Reo Māori. And in that dream, I'm cruising down Lampton Quay, right, I'm heading to the bus stop, calling in to pick up a coffee. And all around me, all I can hear is the din and the cacophony of a million conversations happening in Te Reo Māori. Millions of them, everywhere. That's my dream. Now I'm here today to give you the opportunity to weave yourself into that dream and to think about how we, as the awesome little nation we are, might make that possible. But first I'll take you on a journey back into the origins of the dream. And the origins of those million conversations finds itself in the growing experience of my Fano, my family, right here in God's own. So when my mum was going to school, and sorry mum, but it was the 1950s, she went to a school, a native school. And when she went to native school every day for 10 years, if she accidentally slipped into using her home language, Te Reo Māori, in the playground, guess what happened to her? She was beaten, beaten every day for 10 years, beaten. And I wish I could tell you that it was just her and it was just our family affected, but it wasn't. This happened right across Aotearoa. In fact, this happened all around the world to indigenous communi communities everywhere. And you know, when that generation grew up and became parents themselves, guess what they did? They made a sensible decision to withhold their home language, their Māori language, from their children. And so guess where the one in five comes from? It comes from that lived experience. But you know, I'm one of those kids, right? And when I started school in 1972, thankfully for me, the beatings were over. Hariruia, fantastic. But I learned some really, really tricky things when I was at school as a little Māori girl. I learned 
alongside my reading, my writing, and my arithmetic, that there is no particular value in being Māori. I learned that if you were Māori, you were quite possibly naturally criminally inclined, that you certainly weren't trustworthy, and obviously you wouldn't amount to much. Now luckily for me, that same year that I started school, there were some awesome things happening around Aotearoa Whānui. There are a couple of researchers on a bit of a mission, two sociolinguists, Richard and Nina Benton. And they were moving around Māori communities in search of the last remaining speakers. And what they discovered was that at that time, less than 1% of New Zealanders could call it or Māori with any degree of proficiency whatsoever. Less than 1%. Well, you can imagine the response to news like that. It sparked what's been considered to be the greatest, the greatest renaissance of a culture anywhere in the world. In that same year, there are another couple of groups of people, right here in Wellington, in fact, working on a petition to take to Parliament. Now, the petition was calling for the inclusion of Māori language and Māori culture into New Zealand educational curriculum. These groups, Ngā Tamatoa and the Māori Language Society, they went door to door to collect those signatures. And in the end, they collected 30,000. 30,000 signatures right here in Wellies. They presented that petition to Parliament in September that year. And as a result, our curriculum and, in fact, education policy was shifted and altered for years to come. Now, I was lucky enough to be at high school immediately after that happened, 1981 in fact, and my personal experience of benefiting from their bravery, from their courage, was that in 1981 I was offered the opportunity to learn my language as a subject. Pretty awesome. And I grabbed that with two hands and I haven't looked back since. So, there's something that happens when you're faced with a tragedy, with a travesty. You either lie down and die, or you decide, I'm up for it. I'm going to do something different for my children. And so when my husband and I became parents, we made some really mm, important, but uh, somewhat challenging decisions. We decided, my Lebanese husband and I, that we would raise bilingual children right here in Aotearoa. Looking back on that time, I mean, <clears throat> we had a cheek, really, frankly. Neither of us spoke real Māori. Neither of us had a sniff of sociolinguistic training to speak of. And armed with the tiniest little scrap of research, we were off in pursuit of the magic formula to raise bilingual children. Luckily for us, we had a total of four children to experiment on. <laughs> four. And frankly, between you and I, yeah, we didn't really get it right till we got to number three. <laughs> Sorry, one and two. <laughs> and so, being a logical thinker and being good parents, we thought, right, we want a bilingual kid, excellent, off to bilingual school we go. That's what we did. We made him a nice lunch, we made sure he had a good bag, and we sent him off to school. And then we sat at home, waiting for the magic to happen. A funny thing happened. He didn't come home with the real Māori. We thought somehow that it was somebody else's responsibility, somebody else's work to do to feed him his language. And after six months, with his sister now waiting in the wings, we began to panic. Our great plans weren't, just weren't working. So we stepped back from the whole situation and we decided that we needed to do what any logical parent would do and we mapped the level of language exposure that he got in a day. And then we mapped the level of language exposure, English and Māori, that he got in a seven day week. And guess what we found? 90% of the time during his waking hours, he was exposed to just English language and he just got 10% exposure to the old Māori. I can hear you thinking, and he's in a bilingual unit, like... 
When we went in to have a look and see what was happening in the bilingual unit and met his teacher, the poor darling was just learning the language herself, right? So she had a little bit of time just before lunch every day to try and give the kids as much as she could. We knew that we had to up our game. So we rolled our sleeves up and we looked around the community to see what was going on. And lucky for us, thanks to that cultural renaissance that I told you about, Kohangareo and Kura Kaupapa Māori were absolutely pumping. Total immersion education options for parents who wanted their children to grow up bilingual. Well, I don't need to tell you, we were in their boots and all. And all of a sudden, we went from being a little family of four, trying to do this big thing on our own, to being part of a huge community. Having a community of like-minded souls trying to achieve the same outcome. But that mapping I told you about, it revealed something else as well. You see, we were still of the mindset that we could send our kids off somewhere and they'd come back with the goods. But actually, when we mapped where they spent the majority of their time, guess what? They spent the most of it with us. And what language were we speaking at home? We were speaking English. So, me, mum, I had to humble myself and go out and learn my language as an adult. Really uncomfortable in the beginning. Really awkward. I mean, nobody can imagine a Frenchman that doesn't speak French, right? Nobody wants to be that Māori who can't speak Māori. Awkward in the extreme. During my language learning journey, I lurched from zero to hero daily. I remember asking this lovely old queer once if she was a cup of tea. I said, he kapu tea kwe? Instead of, he kapu tea mau, would you like a cup of tea? And if that's not bad enough, I offered her armpit, ke ke, instead of cake, ke ke. <laughs> These occurrences, just, they were everyday things. But then I decided that if I was going to keep up with my children who were in immersion education, I really needed to up the ante. So I adopted what I like to call the terror approach to rapid language acquisition. That is, I terrified myself daily by forcing myself to have conversations with other, other adults who could speak real Māori. I'll give you a little squiz. So I'd go along to Kohanga, right, drop the kids off every morning. And on the way, I'd be practicing the three sentences that I'd created in the car the night before. Anaitana peke, kai te pai koe, ki It all the way to kohanga talking to myself. Then as soon as I hit the door, I burst in, deliver my three sentences, drop the kid, and I'm out. <laughs> that was the terror learning approach to reo Māori. Now things didn't really shift for us as a family until baby number three was born. Baby number three. Magic baby number three. You see, we had a hui, as you do, right? We had a hui. And we decided that when this baby was born, we wouldn't speak English to her. We decided, the kids, my husband and I, we decided that we would really challenge ourselves, not speak Māori to the baby. Babies are beautiful to practice your language learning on, because you know what? They don't take the piss. They don't look at you like you're an idiot when you get it wrong. They just kind of lie there all cool and happy. <coughs> and so as we got used to speaking Māori with the baby, it just kind of spilled out into the rest of the family. And before you knew it, our home was a place where Māori language was spoken, just as a natural, ordinary thing. Now, I don't know how natural and ordinary our home was, because actually, Everything in our house was labelled with the word for everything in Te Reo Māori, right? Everywhere, yellow stickies. Our walls were covered in helpful sentence structures and conversation starters. Because remember, I'm a mum who's trying to have conversation with my kids going to total immersion. I needed help. After a while, when baby number four came along, I realised that we'd actually made some significant progress because we didn't need to have a hui to decide that we wouldn't speak Māori to this baby. It was just an assumption. And by the time he was born, 
and we were all rocking along. We were not just containing our real Māori universe to our home. We were pushing out into communities. We hosted real Māori picnics, real Māori movie nights with our one video in Te Reo Māori. We did real Māori paintball. We did everything. And we demanded and sought and asked for Māori language services everywhere to help our kids grow into their environment. And you know, that's just our story as a whānau, but in fact, it could be the story of thousands of whānau all over Aotearoa, in fact, all over the world, where Indigenous communities are focused on recovering and rejuvenating and revitalising our language and culture. Now I know, because you're all awesome people, that you want to help. I can feel that you want to help. So I have a couple of jobs for you, just two, just two. The first thing that you can do to make our environment, to make Aotearoa Whanui a place that is awesome for kids growing up with their indigenous language, is that you can decide today to adopt a relentlessly positive attitude. Relentlessly positive. If you see here somebody on the bus bagging that guy who's speaking Māori, you speak up and you say, hey, it's quite cool actually, I'm down with real Māori. That's the first thing you can do. Adopt a positive attitude. Your positive attitude will make our kids feel safe to use their reo in the wider community. Now, the second thing that you can do, just in case you're feeling really, really brave, is learn the language. You will never be asked to abandon your heritage or your culture or your whakapapa through this ask. What I'm asking you to think about is how to weave real Māori into your daily life and perhaps add your voice to the million conversations, the million conversations that we will build together all over Aotearoa and New Zealand. So, I'm going to give you a little starter, right? I'm going to give you a little something that you can carry around with you wherever you go Guaranteed to make the people around you feel awesome. That is, unless you're into sarcasm. You could kind of, you know, you could use it either way. So I'm going to teach you how to say this cool thing that makes everybody feel awesome. You listen, and then I'll get you to say it back to me. To pai hoki. To pai hoki. Again, to pai hoki. You know what that means? You are awesome. You are awesome, how good you are, how wonderful you are. For those of us who are parents, we know we need those handy praise phrases in our back pockets, especially when the kids are playing up at the supermarket. Tō pai hoki. You take that, you spread it all over Aotearoa, and I guarantee you'll make the world a better place. Nō reira. E aku piki kōtuku, e aku māpihi mauria, tēnā rā koutou katoa. <laughs>